Now that my fellow ghoulitics have finished their inane narrations, it's time for me, the Crypt Keeper, to wind up the old witch's magazine with a good terror tale. Ah, let me see. Yes, I know one for my vast collection here in the crypt that I'm sure will make your blood freeze in your veins. It's a horror story that will melt your cold hearts. I call it the irony of death. Jeffrey Slag stood on the top platform of the blast furnace in the Kriegor Iron and Steel Works and lifted his voice above the roaring din, shouting orders. All right, men, she's charged. The heart's about full. Open the tap-off hole. Open her up. As Jeff Slag, the plant superintendent, signaled the go-ahead, a door at the base of the huge blast furnace was opened, and the molten white metal ran down the clay-lined trough. Here she comes. The gushing stream of liquid iron rushed on down the trough and spilled over into the waiting ladle car. Okay, she's almost full. Close up the tap hole. At the last of the molten iron slid into the ladle car, now filled to the brim. Take her down to the ingot mounds and have them poured, Joe. Okay, Mr. Slag. Jeff Slag watched as the ladle car with its white-hot liquid cargo moved slowly up the tracks toward the crane that would lift it into the waiting molds. Hey, Slag. Mr. Kriegor wants you in his office right away. Okay, Tim. Take over for me, huh? Jeff made his way down from his perch high on the blast furnace and crossed the plant to Mr. Kriegor's soundproofed office. You wanted to see me, Mr. Kriegor? Yes, Slag. Come and sit down. Mr. Kriegor, the owner of the Kriegor Iron and Steel Works, lighted a cigar and leaned back in his plush chair. All right, Slag. I'm a businessman. What's your price? I don't get you, Mr. Kriegor. What's your price to keep you away from my daughter? I know what you're after. It's her money you're interested in, nothing else. Now, I'm willing to make it worth your while to lay off. You're right, Mr. Kriegor, but you're too late. Your daughter and I are married already. What? what? I'll have it annulled. I'll blackest you in every steel plant in the country. No, Mr. Kriegor, you wouldn't do anything like that, because I'm not going to let you. I worked hard to make your daughter Sandra fall for me. When you die, this plant goes to her. And me. Never. Never. I'll disown her. Cut her off without a cent. You're no good, Slag. I know you're kind. I... Keep away. Keep... Keep away. The shriek of the new whistle drowned out old Mr. Kriegor's cry as Jeff Slag struck him. After a few moments, Jeff opened up the door and glanced out. The steel mill was deserted. All the workers had gone outside for lunch. Jeff picked up Mr. Kriegor and carried him across the plant and up the steps leading to the ingot mold platform. Too bad, Mr. Kriegor, but I can't afford to give you a chance to do the thing you threatened. You'll have to die. When Jeff reached the platform, he covered the unconscious form of Mr. Kriegor with a tarpaulin and waited. Twenty. Thirty. Forty-five minutes. Finally, there, now they'll be coming back from lunch. Jeff glanced down at the ladle car below him, filled to the brim with molten white hot iron. Just as soon as enough men come in, I'll toss him over. Suddenly the steel mill was filled with a blood-curdling scream. My god, look! Someone! Falling! The molten metal hissed and sputtered. Good lord, he fell right into the ladle car. It was old man Kriegor. I saw his face. I... I don't feel so good. Jeff, taking advantage of the concern of the man over Mr. Kriegor's death, slipped down the platform and... What... what happened? What was that scream? Miss Mr. Kriegor... He must have been up on the ingot mold platform. He fell off. Yeah, right into the ladle car. Oh, no. No, are you sure? I seen his face. It was him, all right. And I I didn't get a chance to tell him about Sandra and me. You, you and Kriegor's daughter married, Jeff? That makes you boss. Look, fellas, I better go home and break the news to Sandra. Keep, 
keep everything going while I'm gone, eh? What about this ladle car, Jeff? Should we sidetrack it? You heard me. I said keep everything going. That means everything. You, you mean pour her into ingots? That's exactly what I mean. No use wasting good pig iron. When the ingots cool, put them aside. I'll want them for my own use. Yeah, Jeff. We got you, Jeff. Heh <laughs> Yes, that's how Jeffrey Slag became president of the Kriegor Iron and Steel Works. He just tossed poor old unconscious Mr. Kriegor into the ladle of molten iron, screamed to attract attention, and he was instantly promoted. They called it an unfortunate accident. The ingots of metal they contained Mr. Kriegor's remains were stored away. But not for long. Jeff had one of them processed into a rugged safe to hold his inherited fortune. <laughs> a fitting monument to your memory, Mr. Kriegor. He had another of the ingots containing Mr. Kriegor's remains processed into wrought iron garden furniture. Ah, this is the life. Thanks to you, Mr. Kriegor. A third ingot was fashioned into countless ashtrays, which Jeff placed about his luxurious mansion, grinding cigarettes out in them. Degrading, isn't it, Mr. Kriegor? The tables are turned now, aren't they? And poor Sandra... Poor disillusioned Sandra, becoming more and more unhappy as months passed. Jeff, what's happened to us, Jeff? You act as though you don't love me anymore. How did you guess? I've got what I want now, Sandra. The mill, the money. That's the only reason I married you. Oh, Jeff. Jeff. And I believed you. Loved me. Oh, stop your whimpering. If you don't like it, divorce me. But my price will be very high. Very high. I'll want the mill. The whole works. So Sandra left Jeff. Goodbye, Jeff. I'm leaving you. Leaving you with everything. I'll get along. Yeah, sure. So long. Good riddance. There were other things Jeff did with the ingots of iron from the ladle that Mr. Kriegor had fallen into. Jeff had garden tools fashioned. Scrounge, Mr. Kriegor. Scrounged in the filth and mud like I had to do for years. Other degrading forms. That's what I think of you, Mr. Kriegor. And then, one day... Well, find them. There were two ingots left. Yes, Mr. Slag. The last of the ingots containing Mr. Kriegor's remains had disappeared from the storeroom. Jeff was furious. I suspect, sir, they were shipped out to Detroit along with another order. Well... Get them back! I want them back! At a board meeting several weeks later. And that's the plan, Mr. Slag. An exhibit of the history of the uses of iron throughout the centuries. It will be very impressive. Sounds alright. Okay. Go ahead. It's a good advertising stunt. Meanwhile, the shipments of iron ingots were being checked. I'm sure of it. The Detroit order had been checked carefully. Oh dear. Mr. Slag will be very angry. Very Weeks passed. One day. So, how do you like my exhibit, Mr. Slag? Very nice. What's this? Oh, these are examples of some of the more infamous uses of iron throughout the ages. We constructed exact replicas of many of the torture devices used in the Middle Ages, employing iron. Hmm, very interesting. What's this one called? This is a copy of the notorious Iron Maiden device. I see. They put a person inside, like so? P please sir, be careful, those spikes are razor sharp. Fits perfectly. Suddenly, the spike door of the Iron Maiden closed slightly, pinning Jeff's lag inside. S stop it, stop it, it's closing. Please, Mr. Slag, I don't see any humor in your antics. Slowly, steadily, the spike door closed on the frenzied screaming steelworks owner. I'm not joking, they spikes there. Ah! Quickly, open it! I, I can't, it's, it's stuck! Unable to open the spiked door, the board members watched horrified as the Iron Maiden closed, watched as the blood trickle out of the bottom and form a pool on the floor, listened as Jeff's shrieking finally died away. How horrible! I can't understand it, it just seemed to close by its own accord. Meanwhile, in the shipping room, wait a minute, here's something. Yes, th this is it. The two missing ingots were used in the construction of an Iron Maiden. 
for the exhibit. <laughs> and that's my story, dear friends. I hope you got the point. Jeff did, of course. It might have been an accident, the Iron Maid in closing. But then again, having been made of the ingots containing poor Mr. Krigor's remains, it might not have been, eh? Don't forget to read The Old Witch's Niche for information on getting back issues. Bye now. We'll all see you next time in my mag, Tales from the Crypt.